Good evening and welcome back to the Cool Media Halloween Special. I'm Adam, and this is the last installment for this year. We're playing more Fatal Frame 3 The Tormented. I already mentioned last time that no, I would not be finishing it. I'm only on Chapter 3, and from what I've seen in walkthroughs, it's up to 13. No, I have not actually looked at any of the walkthrough. I just looked at the table of contents to see how many. I don't know if I'm going to be returning to this at a later time. It won't be for next Halloween special, I can tell you that. Next Halloween special would be going to a different game. Whether or not I come back to this, maybe during the break periods between Outlaw Golf Tours, is up to the audience. If, if you want to see more of the game, let me know in the comments or in my Twitter, and I'll consider throwing it into the schedule. As it is, I do have plenty of other things to do. Among them is getting back to one video that I had to miss last month because of illness. Anyway, like what I'm doing? Want to see more? Give a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. My subscriber count is almost at 1,800. Thanks a lot to everybody who's joining in. And now, let's go on to the next part of Fatal Frame 3. Okay, last time I had to run back here just because of the fact I ran out of time. I'm trying to keep these videos at around the hour mark, mainly because of the fact that with my very bloated schedule at this point, With my very bloated schedule at this point, I don't have a whole lot of time to make videos. Okay. So. When I left off, there's this voice coming from that locked door, and I clearly need to find some way in there. But I think I've explored everywhere. Well, I must not have, because otherwise I would have found the way. I did find that, that one other locked door in the upstairs. There's really nothing more off to the left. Now last time I was coming through this area there were a couple a couple brats that were causing so much trouble. There were a couple doors down that corridor that are barred off. There's nothing upstairs.
And like I said, I'm trying to avoid actually looking up walkthroughs because I don't really want to spoil what's going on. But on the flip side, I'm positively stumped about where I need to go. Okay, I managed to unlock this door. Locked. Need some kind of flower key. I think I saw one ghost heading up that way, so I must need to go there. Okay, that's sealed. Why do they have this angle if there's nothing over there? What? I didn't notice that. It looks like scratches on the floor. Oh, whatever it is, it looks like it can't do anything with it right now. That asshole with the knife doesn't show up again. There must be something I'm missing over here. Door. There must be something I'm missing. Obviously there is, if there are a whole bunch of exorcist strips there. What about this door? That one's sealed too. Where's a door that isn't sealed? Okay, come on. Okay, it's clearly annoying when there's something on the floor.
Kind of weird that this projector is able to run when this place has no power. Is that another real film? Oh, there's folklore notes too. Everything on the grounds is presided over by a group of shrine maidens called the Handmaidens. As a man, I'm only allowed to enter certain rooms. During the day, I'm confined to my assigned chambers, but during the night, I'm invited into the chambers of a woman named Kyoka. There isn't much contact with the outside world in the manor, and guests are a rarity, so Kyoka always listens to my stories raptly. The sound of her plucking her koto is as fine and delicate as her hair. When I told her I was collecting songs, she let me hear a few of the folk songs passed on in this region. It seems the Sleeping Priestess song has something to do with the shrine after all, and is used in rituals and called the Handmaiden song here. According to Kyoka, there are four handmaidens in the manor, who are girls of roughly five to nine years old chosen from nearby villages and then made to serve a, t made to serve a, tour a term of duty. They also apparently play a crucial role in the rite of the Handmaiden song, but Kyoka wouldn't tell me about the rite itself. Guessing from the lyrics, I would think the rite involves a priestess and tattoos, but it wouldn't be rude of me to pry too it would be rude of me to pry too much. Okay, so that gives some context to that song. Doesn't answer where I need to go. Now, when it comes to survival horror games, I don't need ab absolutely everything spelled out to me. I seriously don't. Anyone who's paid attention to my vocal articles knows that two of my top ten games are survival horror games. I guess I can't fall through the hole in the floor.
okay. I am absolutely stumped beyond all hope. So I had to look up something. Remember the room with the peephole? Apparently I have to go there in order to unlock one of the doors I missed. Okay. Now, if I remember correctly, the door with the peephole is upstairs from here. Yes, it is. I had to look that up. How the hell was I to figure that out on my own? No survival horror games involve a lot of backtracking. I lost count how many times I've backtracked through the Spencer Mansion and through the towns of Silent Hill. Since I got that ghost, apparently one of the doors near where the singing is would have unlocked. None of this teleporting bullshit!
Okay, I'm getting out of here. Oh, great. It's one of those cases in which... Sorry! You absolutely have to fight this one. I could have sworn I should have had a lock. I should have a lock on. Oh, come on! Yeah, you can tell by now that the ghost encounters are definitely annoying me. They should be scary, they should be tense, but they're more annoying than anything else. Especially the ones that teleport. Okay, the singing had stopped. And that door is now well, not this one, the other one. Very tight space. Please don't say there's a fight in here. <laughs> On the candlelit altar is a huge gemstone as big as my palm. It looks like it might be used in some kind of ceremony. Something is reflecting light above the altar. The bellflower key. Now, I'd seen a lot of locked doors on the way here, so... question is, where's the door for this one? Oh! Shit! I 
Are you hurt? Oh shit! Come on! Quit going through the walls. Come on. I wonder if being impaled hurts. I wonder which hurts worse, having the stake go in a little bit at a time, or having it stab through all at once. I wonder if they die if the stake goes all the way through. I wonder if it matters if they die. I want to impale a real priestess soon. Okay, let's see what these notes are. Every time I dream of the house, the snake-like tattoo gets bigger. The stabbing pain is worse every day. If things carry on like this, it will eventually cover my whole body. And then? The dreams, the manner, what do they mean? How can I escape? The Red Doll Room. In the small room where I heard the lullaby, red dolls were nailed to the walls. Inside was one of the girls dressed as shrine maidens who tried to impale me in my daydream. Who is she? And what was she doing in there? Well, I have a few pictures to develop.
Miku, that song. Oh, right. Good morning. That song? I don't remember exactly where I heard it, but I feel like I've been hearing it in my dreams lately. I don't have any idea what the lyrics mean. Could it be some sort of dialect? Dreams. Miku was singing the same lullaby I heard inside the manor. She says she heard the song in her dream, too. Has she been having the same dreams? Is she being lured into the house, too? Just like Yoshino Takigawa. And me? Miku Hanasaki. The girl who works as my assistant. The song she was singing was the lullaby I heard inside that manor. Is Miku having the same dreams as me? She lost a relative, someone close. Is that who she sees in her dreams, just like me? Okay, what's this? An envelope has been delivered through the letterbox. Oh, it's from Kay. Dear you, I'm sending you a testimony tape I just found about the urban legend. If I give it to you, I know you'll take good care of it. I found several other tapes, but as they're quite old, having them having been dubbed by a gramophone, they're damaged. I'm trying to get them restored now. I'll send them to you when they're done. Lately, I've solely been researching folklore. Legends, folk tales, and folk religion. That was both your and, my, and Mafuyu's field, wasn't it? It's an interesting world, but I don't want to get too deep into it. I was Mafuyu's sister. Her name is Miku, right? I'm searching everywhere I can, but I still don't know Junsei Takam Takamine's whereabouts. Maybe he was spirited away, too? If you got anything, let me know. Mio's health is not good, so I put her in the hospital. She only wakes once every two days, and then for only a couple hours at a time. I've got to hurry with my research. Regards, K. Amakura. Is this girl Mio Amakura? Well, I guess. There seems to be a cassette enclosed. Tate, Manor Sleep A. Maybe I could play it on the tape deck in my room. Hey, well, I still got I still got pictures to develop. In my dream I saw my mother, in that manner. Inside, there was an old shrine. It was cold. Snow was falling. I could hear a song. There were so many people going into the shrine. It, it was like a funeral procession. I could smell incense burning. Everyone was hiding their faces. My mother was among them. No matter how many times I called her, she kept going further and further. And just before the door shut, it was like I was going to be left all alone. I saw it every day. I went in just a little bit. If I went any further, I wouldn't be able to come back. But I thought I could meet my mother in there. Okay. Oh, 
That curtain wasn't blowing before. Shrine maiden in the room full of dolls nailed to the wall. She has a stake in her hand, just like in my vision. Who or what could she be? <sighs> Mafuyo Hinas Hinasaki. Written in Kei's letter was the name of Miku's brother, Mafuyu. He was a friend of K and U who disappeared while on the trail of missing writer Junsei Takamine. People say he was spirited away. I knew Miko had lost a relative, but I thought he had died. She never spoke about her brother. That photo. Is Miku still longing for the brother she lost? Shrine Maiden Girl. The girls who appeared in my daydream at the deserted house I visited on that photography assignment. In the dream manner, they were in the room where the red dolls were nailed to the wall. Who or what could they be? If the manner I saw that day was the one I drink was the one I dream about, the one I heard about from Miku. Does that mean they were carrying out some kind of ceremony there, impaling people? Right. What's the matter? Miku, that person in the picture on your desk. That's my older brother. He's been missing for quite some time. I didn't know. Sorry for bringing it up. I was just wondering. Got another picture to hand over. What can't I? Maybe if I head out of the room and then head back in, I could get hand over that picture. Having trouble sleeping? Do you need to sleep in here with me? Ray, about that photo of the doll on the skewer, I wasn't able to find anything on it. I thought it may be similar to the legends of the straw dolls passed on in Tono. Anyway, it has something to do with folklore, so you might find something in one of you's books. Thanks, I'll go take a look. Ray, I researched that abandoned house we covered. Here, why don't you take a look? Coverage of the Abandoned House. Below is a summary of what a newspaper reporter told me about the coverage of the Abandoned House. I didn't have time before, so please take this as a reference. 1. History of the Manor. They say there were several villages around the manor until the 1900s, but today only the abandoned house remains. Even the landowner does not know when or why it was built. Now only the area around the entrance is left, but originally it was a huge manor. 
deep and strangely shaped. It seems on old maps a shrine is occasionally drawn in, but now there exists not so much as a trace of it, and not much is known about it. But on the outlying mountains it seems a myth-like story is told that is connected to the other world. 2. The rumor of the ghost manor may be due to the myth, but since long ago the abandoned house has been called a ghost manor, many people visit it just because of the rumor. The rumor is that you can meet the dead at the manor, and further that the dead you meet will summon you to the other world. The rumor's origins are said to be in the seances that were held in a shrine there, but that's merely a rumor too. In any case, I think the story of the mountain connected to the other world is the source of the rumor. Thanks, I really appreciate it. You can ask me whatever you want, okay? Ray, you've been working too hard. You should get some rest. It's raining again. It's raining again. Hey, I have another picture to hand over. Yeah, I saw film grain. It's raining again. I guess I can't hand that picture over. that I missed or that are not or that haven't been available until now in the bookcase there's a book with a projector similar to the one you photographed in the mansion the spirit world the device shown here was left by Kunihiko Asu. He used it to substantiate the existence of, and communication with, the spirit world. He was a brilliant scientist and philosopher, and by appropriating Western culture in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, he combined new technology with his theory of the spirit world to prove its existence. It is said a few of his devices were able to capture an unbelievable existence from the spirit world, but posthumously, from that singular beginning, his devices became a fashion item among dilettantes, and were scattered about the country. One such device is this projector. Having completed the experimental stage of the camera obscura, a camera that photographs the other world see above, he created a screen upon which to project the special images captured on the film. The records say that images were projected that could not be seen when they were photographed. Skewer dolls. In many regions, particularly in the mountain areas, there remains a folk practice of dressing up dolls they make from straw, earth, or cloth, and worshipping them as idols. The doll in the picture was reported by the Iwadi resident. It is called Kushimi, and when someone dies in the village, they weave the hair of the deceased into the straw and have it wear his or her kimono. I actually saw several of those dolls throughout before this. The doll is fixed onto skewers and put before a shrine at the edge of the mountain. The doll is enshrined for up to one month after the death, and after that period passes, it's cast into the river behind the shrine together with various offerings. In this region's tradition, there is said to be a cave in the mountain connecting to the land of the gods. The dead who became Kashimi stand between the village and the mountain. They take upon the village's evil and head, and head to the land of the gods. In a neighboring village, there is said to be a similar doll called Igushi, but this one is the spirit of a person who died young and is deified in the mountains. In one interpretation, both village and mountain have a protective deity standing in the border between people and gods. In another scene, burdening the, de burdening the dead with evil or deifying the spirit of the young in a mountain connotes human sacrifice.
Any more books? No. All right. Miku tells me the house I went to is famous for being haunted. They say it's a place where people can meet the dead. And that the dead lure people into the other world. The words have stayed in my mind. What if you really is there inside that manor calling out to me? What will I do? Inside the manor, in a courtyard surrounded by a corridor, was a tree wrapped with sacred rope. Around it stood straw dolls skewered on stakes. According to an old book on folklore, the practice belongs to an old folk cult. The dolls stood at the border between the mountains, divine, and the village, human, functioning as protective deities or amulets. What is there in that courtyard behind that door? Kunihiku Asu, a scholar of the occult who lived in the second half of the 19th century. His research, known as mystical science, attempted to use the new Western technology to explain old Japanese folk beliefs and traditions about the other world. After completing his camera obscura, capable of capturing images of the other world, he made a projector using the same technology. Using this, he was able to play back supernatural images recorded on film that could not be seen on conventional equipment. The old projector from the house I saw in my dream. It was developed by Kuniiko Asu, who lived in the second half of the 19th century. It uses the technology of the camera obscura to show supernatural images from another plane that can't be played on normal equipment. Yeah, I got some film grain there. Oh. Niku, what are you doing out here? It seems like you're having a lot of nightmares lately. Are you alright? No shit, Sherlock. It's raining again. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Just I saw the film grain, I wanted to see if there were any ghosts around.
Anyway. This dream again. I thought I wasn't going to have it anymore. So now I'm controlling Miku. Imuro Mansion. I think this is the location from the original Fatal Frame. Okay. It seems to me like a decent place to stop. <sighs> well, since this is the last installment for this Halloween special, I know I'm only in the fourth chapter, barely a third of the way through the game, but I have to say, Well, best word for it is disappointed. The first two Fatal Frame games absolutely grabbed me. They had, they had tight stories. The combat with the ghosts was... It was challenging, but it was also... It also felt fair. This one pulls a few too many dirty tricks and... It just got to be more annoying than frightening. It got to be the point. It got to the point where, when the ghosts showed up, I didn't want to fight them. Not because, not because of limited resources or anything like that, but because of the fact that they play so many dirty tricks that just get annoying. I can definitely see why this one isn't getting the esteem of the first two. It seems like it had the elements to be able to be a great follow-up, but it just missed the mark in so many spots. It's not terrible. It's just... It's just a disappointing follow-up to the first two. Now, I hadn't had a chance to play Maiden of Blackwater, even though I do have the first chapter of it on my Wii U. Since that one is actually getting a remastery for the current consoles, I might actually give that one a try, see if they actually improve things. And I'm not opposed to the idea of continuing on this if there's enough demand for it. Maybe I can do an installment of this in the inter in the interims between whenever I do Outlaw Golf Tours or something like that. But this would be it for this year's Halloween special. Well, like what I'm doing here, even if it isn't all just sports, give a like, subscribe if you haven't already, have any questions, comments, suggestions for next year's Halloween special? Drop them in the comments below or submit them to my Twitter. My handle's right there. I also have a Patreon. If you want to help the channel grow, you can drop a dollar and get into the credits. Next time starts November, and I'm going to be starting it off with finishing El Suave's tour on Outlaw Golf 2. And then after that, 
for Thanksgiving weekend. I'm going to have the video that got delayed because of illness last month. And I'm also going to have something special for Thanksgiving itself. Take care of yourselves. Hope you enjoyed. Happy Halloween and game on.